Welcome to episode two of our New Zealand travel tips, all about the North Island. New Zealand is a seriously amazing place to travel with so many hidden gems, bucketless experiences and incredible landscapes. The North and the South Islands both offer something completely unique, so whether you're a long-time subscriber just showing us some love, a Kiwi like us taking the chance to properly immerse in your own country, or you're taking notes for when borders open, in this series, we've got you covered. We're Dane and Stacey, and in the last year, we've probably spent more time on the road filming and exploring New Zealand than at home. I'm just I'm very proud to say that this is New Zealand and to finally get the chance for us to show what this country looks like. We recently shared the 10 best South Island experiences, so in this video, we'll share our top 10 favourites in the North Island. <laughs> Kicking off the top spot with the top rated day hike in New Zealand, the Tongariro Alpine Crossing. There's no better way to see the beauty of the North Island in one day than with this stunning 19 kilometer hike through the oldest national park in the country. I'm sure it looks amazing on camera, but in person. While the hike takes around six to eight hours in total, it's split into different sections, each with varying terrain and landscapes, so it feels like multiple amazing hikes in one. After tackling the Devil's Staircase, we arrived on a glacially carved flat once filled by lava to walk the saddle between two active volcanoes. Welcome to the South Crater. This is another world up here. Just on the edge of winter, we didn't need crampons, but the sketchy climb through snow and ice leads up to Red Crater 1,800 metres above sea level. This mind-blowing setting was our spot to stop for some lunch. This is, without a doubt, the best day hike we have ever done. We'll be featuring the hike in a video soon, so won't cover everything here, but the descent is a completely different hike again. The snow melts away and is replaced by waterfalls, nature and rainforest. Pro tip. This isn't a casual stroll you can just chuck on some trainers for, so we took a guided tour with the Drift Tongarero and suggest you look at guided options as well. Weather can change in a heartbeat, transport is vital and being prepared for all potential conditions is a must. If a city vibe is more your thing, then a visit to Auckland is a must. Sure, there's great food and plenty of beaches, but you'll want to check out two of the most iconic landmarks, the Sky Tower and the Harbour Bridge. So while you're there, why not climb them? About to head up to the very top, past all the cars. It's noisy already. The Auckland Bridge Climb is the less extreme of the two, a tour packed with history and information along with the obvious heights. Even as a couple of kids who grew up in the city, we absolutely loved it. All up the climb was about two hours of exploring under, through, over and literally up on top of the bridge. The Skywalk is just a casual walk 192 metres above the ground around the outside of New Zealand's tallest building, the Sky Tower. Ah! <laughs> I feel like I can't even turn my body around. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the skull, guys. Even with the safety harness and cables, it takes some courage to force yourself out there, but it's worth it for what is easily the best unobstructed 360 degree views of Auckland. Even if you're not a massive fan of heights, it's worth giving at least one of these a go. You might just surprise yourself. Pro tip. Both tours are run by AJ Hackett, so keep an eye on their website for combo deals. If you're a bit on the wild side, you could even add on a bungee or sky jump. If you'd prefer to have your feet firmly on solid ground with a spot of whining and dining instead, then a visit to Waiheke Island is a must. Just a 40 minute ferry from Auckland CBD, Waiheke is a stunning island destination with a much slower pace than the big city. It's known for vineyards, wineries, food and beaches. I get the feeling we're going to be trying more than a few wines today, so let's just cheers this first one and appreciate Until it gets messy today. <laughs> cheers. We've spent countless weekends on Waiheke. It's one of our favourite places to visit during the summer because the water is crystal clear, the vibes are good and the wine is even better. Aside from the food and wine, there's loads of activities for adventurers too. From amazing hikes to zip lining over the vineyards. I don't know if we're racing or not. Seeing the island from above, or cruising around the island in style. Look at this ride. What a vibe for the vineyards. Oh, it's a Chevy. <laughs> Pro tip. 
make sure to book accommodation well in advance. Waiheke is small and there's a lot of competition for places to stay. Things can get crazy busy, especially in summer, so you've got to be prepared. New Zealand is known as an epic road trip destination for a reason, and one of the North Island's best roadies is deep up north, as far as you can go to a spot known as Cape Reinga. I'm just I'm very proud to say that this is New Zealand and to finally get the chance for us to show what this country looks like. Cape Reinga is the most accessible northernmost point in the North Island, home to Māori legend, an iconic lighthouse, ancient Pahutukawa trees and the place to see where the Pacific Ocean and the Tasman Sea meet. And with that, some beautiful, isolated, long sandy white beaches. We did the Cape Reinga Lighthouse Walk, an easy stroll down from the car park to the water. But if you're feeling brave, you can do the Tipaki Track, a multi-day hike that's about 48 k's one way. Pro tip. There are two other unique must-dos if you venture that far north. The giant Tipaki sand dunes where you can sandboard down some of the biggest dunes we've ever seen and 90 Mile Beach where you can go four-wheel driving on New Zealand's most unique highway and make your own donuts whenever you want. Skirt. It would be rude on a trip up north to not try the country's best fish and chips. The Manganui Fish Shop is an institution that's been around for over 70 years and has earned the title of New Zealand's best fish and chips. Of course, there's some pretty heated debate about that, some of which you can see in the comments on our video that I'll link in the top right here, but we loved it all the same. Wow, tastes so fresh, so tender. I, I like really thick fish, so this is, this is like an absolute winner in my book. We went for the catch of the day, which was blue nose, line caught off the wharf by local fishermen. Of course, we had to add some classic waddies, tomato sauce, and an LMP for the full Kiwi experience. Pro tip. Be prepared for long lines and wait times if you're visiting during summer. If that's the case, go for takeaways and sit by the water instead. Bonus pro tip. If fish and chips aren't your thing but pies are, stop by Honeybees for the best steak and cheese pie you'll ever eat in your entire life. It's an hour north of Manganui, but totally worth the drive. Best pie I've had in years. I don't think I've ever seen a human eat a pie so far. <laughs> World famous in New Zealand is the Waitomo Glowworms. It seems like a rite of passage for tourists featuring on every blog, must-do list and every Lonely Planet guide. But as Kiwis ourselves, we have to admit it's never really been on our radar until recently and we thought it was awesome. I'll tell you what, that was better than I thought it would be. That was you awesome. Know? Yeah. To see a glowworm up close like that, I had no idea what their structure was all about. Mm. Waitomo has an enormous cluster of underground tunnels. That means there's multiple cave tours and options to pick between. On the classic tour, you jump on a boat and cruise through the caves, but there's no videography or photography allowed. So we opted for the Ruakuri cave tour instead, which starts with an insanely long descent down a spiral staircase to the cave entrance. It's such a grand way to start. You don't really expect that you're gonna walk into a tunnel and then go down like a James Bond style <laughs> movie entrance. <laughs> Regardless of the tour you pick, you won't believe how much is going on under there. It's not just thousands of glowworms, but huge limestone formations and raging rivers reachable with platforms and walkways. Pro tip. Wear something warm and don't lean over the railings to get a closer look at their cool looking formations on the wall. You'll trip a sensor, an alarm will go off and everyone will look to see who it was. Awkward, don't be that person. If getting a little reckless and extreme is your scene, then you have to check out Rotorua. He said we had to get on the power to get the momentum to get up. Known as the adventure capital of the North Island, we're talking tandem zip lining, downhill mountain biking, off-road drifting, clay bird shooting, oh God! whitewater rafting, and so much more. This is the perfect place to get outside of your comfort zone and try something new. You've probably never thought about jumping inside a giant inflatable ball filled with water and being rolled down a hill. <laughs> or driving a car off a seven metre vertical drop. <laughs> or maybe taking on the highest commercially rafted waterfall in the world and being ejected out like Stace was. <laughs> but that's just a sample of some of the cool stuff on offer. Pro 
loved it. Check out the links in the description to see what any of these experiences are like. We've linked all of our videos below. If you've seen our top things to do in the South Island video already, you'll know we're suckers for quirky and unique accommodation and recommend that you don't travel around staying in that one hotel chain that you know. The North Island is no exception and is home to some incredible places to stay. Some of the more memorable experiences for us include finding modern tiny homes in the middle of nowhere. Oh my gosh, cute! Luxury holiday homes by the sea. Look at this place. This is ridiculous. A ridiculously large African safari style glamping tent in the countryside. It doesn't even feel like a tent on the inside. It feels like a full on house uh -huh. from this. <laughs> An eco-friendly boutique hotel in the center of Auckland. A vintage chateau in New Zealand's oldest national park. What a building. See all the mountain tops and the snow in the background and then just like bam, it just pops out of nowhere. And the more simple Kiwi options, the budget friendly campsites for your tent or self-contained sleeper. Or the Kiwi classic batch. Pro tip. Check if there's a minimum night stay before you get your heart set on a specific place. This is pretty common, especially during peak season and makes it a little bit difficult if you're just passing through. While the South Island is known for more of its mountains and snow, the North is a buffet of stunning beaches. A trip to the Bay of Islands will easily tick that box. There's plenty of options heading north to get your beach bot out, but getting on the water is also key. Bit of fun though. Yeah, it's bit, so of, bit of fun, fun though. No, it's honestly been really good commentary all day long. It's just literally like chatting to a couple of Kiwi friends. One of our favorite day trips was the Fuller's Cream trip out of Paihia. A catamaran trip that follows the same route that's been used to deliver mail and supplies to island residents since the 1920s. It's a full day trip where we got to sail through the famous hole in the rock. <laughs> We're in it! Wow, it is tight! Stop off at Urupukapuka Island for some lunch. And not every trip is this lucky, but we got to see dolphins and even spotted a few killer whales. So this is a male orca that we've got, apparently about eight meters long. It's dorsal fin, it's about a meter and a half up to two meters. Man, this is a magical start. Pro tip. Do this tour in the summer so it's warm enough to take full advantage of the boom net. A crazy experience that's basically a cross between being caught in a washing machine and a fishing net. and wrapping things up with something pretty wild. How about a trip up to the summit of a dormant volcano that's been asleep for almost 600 years? It's actually just crazy. It's like, this could be Mars. Yeah, it's, it feels like a different planet. Eh? Yeah. Just a 25 minute ferry ride from downtown Auckland is Rangatoto Island, one of Auckland's 50-ish volcanoes and arguably the most popular. It's the youngest island in the Hauraki Gulf and the perfect place to explore on a day trip from town with some snacks and sunscreen. I think we're going to need a lot of that. I'm burning up already. It's a relatively steep and rocky hour or so walk to the summit through some pretty crazy terrain of native forest and lava fields. Reaching the top is worth every step though. The panoramic views of Auckland city and surrounding islands show a different side to the city. You got to say it. Amazing! <laughs> <laughs> Probably nowhere else in the world. <laughs> that we would rather be right now, eh? I know. On the way down, I nominated Dane to explore the lava caves and tunnels. It's worth a look, but remember to bring your head torch or flashlight and keep your eyes peeled for creepy crawlies. Look at this. I wonder how many bugs are in here. This is where the wetters would be at for oh, sure. Don't even say it. All right, we're going in. Pro tip. Respect the environment out there. Anything you bring onto the island needs to be taken home. Other than the boat, there's also no options for food or water, so pack anything that you might need and don't forget your bodies or bikini for the chance to swim as well. And that's 10 of our favorite experiences in the North Island. We've shared links to all of our videos showing each of these experiences individually in the description below. You've obviously made it this far, so we'd appreciate a cheeky like on the video as well so YouTube knows to share this with others. Thanks so much and we'll catch you in the next one.